Could you imagine being trapped underground in a maze that's filled with skeletons? That sounds like enough to keep me away already. Now imagine your deepest, darkest fear is down there with you on top of that. If that was already your deepest, darkest fear, then you're probably already sold on staying away. Well, these people didn't. This is 2014's As Above, So Below. Spoiler alert, while I might be giving you my opinion on the film, that's no substitute for watching it for yourself. Links to the film are in the description. And for those of you that needed to hear this, this is just a movie. All stunts are for the sake of story and shouldn't be attempted on your own. This film also has disturbing, mature themes. Viewer discretion is advised. We start by watching a found footage of Scarlett as she gives testimony to the camera. She's riding on a crowded bus and she admits to knowing that she should not be here. She doesn't care. She believes that someone should see what she has to show them. That evening, she finds refuge with Riza, and he warns her again that her punishment would be terrible if someone were to find her. After she agrees to knowing this already, Riza shows her a hole in the wall, and they go inside. Eventually, sirens go off, and Riza tries to tell her that they should leave right now. She tells him that they aren't going anywhere yet, and he quickly shows her the wall that she's been looking for. It's covered in writing, and she chisels away at the wall to discover a hidden passage behind it. Well, isn't Scarlet a regular old Indiana Jones over here? Imagine Indy as a woman and discovering devil worship artifacts instead of the Holy Grail. Reza tells her that he can't wait around any longer because they are about to blow up the cave. Scarlet stays behind to finish reading the wall, but when she goes to leave, she sees a man hanging in the walkway. As she approaches it, the tunnels blow and she rushes for the hole in Reza's wall. She barely makes it, but when she does, she celebrates quietly on his floor. Reza tells her about how much she reminds him of her father, and he warns her that his quest led him to go mad. She assures him that he wasn't mad and she won't be either. Isn't that what they all say right after seeing a ghost hanging in the middle of a cave tunnel? I feel like this is a prime example of how it all starts. Later, Scarlett introduces herself as a professor in London, and Benji records her. Benji asks her about the Philosopher's Stone, and she tells him about how her father told her that it's the key to eternal life. Imagine if this was just a weird crossover with Harry Potter. She even mentions Nicholas Flamel. How can this not be a crossover? After a tour of the area, Scarlet takes us to Nicholas's tombstone, and she tells Benji that there is a clue to the location on the stone. The key to this is the artifact that she discovered in the cave, and she has discovered where to find the Philosopher's Stone. This leads her to breaking into a church nearby, and she looks around for a fellow named George in the clock tower. As soon as George sees her, he immediately tells her that he's not interested in helping, and he warns Benji to stay away from her. She apologizes for leaving him in a bind the last time they worked together, and when she mentions that she found the key, he immediately gets interested again. He even gets a little worried when he finds out that she went to Iran by herself. In the end, George agrees to help translate, but that's it. This is always the sucker in these movies that you feel sorry for. The one that tries so hard to stay out of the thick of it, but ultimately can't let the opportunity go by. Curiosity killed the cat, and this cat is probably named George, just guessing. That night, George gets them an inside look at Nicholas's tombstone again, and they try to decipher the code. After getting nowhere, Scarlet decides that she needs to see the back of the tombstone, so they remove the ancient stone from the wall. After burning the stone with cleaning products, she reveals a hidden message. They quickly take a picture, and once they get outside, George takes a second to try and solve the puzzle. After literally doing the math to get to hell, Scarlet decides that the only logical destination has to be the catacombs. And if you're looking for some fun fact numbers, the catacombs hold the corpses of more than 6 million dead people. You're welcome. After George reiterates that he's not going underground, Scarlet and Benji join a night tour of the catacombs, and they find all sorts of signs that pretty much foreshadow what's to come. When she finds a key to where she's looking, she finds the point that she needs to get behind, but it's a closed off and restricted section. Just then, a young man sitting on a stone tells them about a club and a person to see there. The tour guide comes to gather them into the group again, and Benji turns the camera to show that the man isn't there. 
See, this is where you do the exact opposite of what the creepy guy said. What do they do? Go straight to the club and immediately ask for Papillon. They deserve what's coming. When they find him, Scarlet tries to convince him that there's a secret tunnel that he doesn't know about. He's certain that there isn't, but when she mentions treasure, he agrees to take them if they get to keep half. The next day, Papillon gets supplies ready and a crew, and when he tries to give George his equipment, he once again points out that he is not going down there. We also meet Susie and Zed, who are also coming with them. These two lovely team members give Benji a whole list of dangers they'll have to face. They essentially give Benji their own version of 1,000 ways to die. Comforting words right before your great expedition. Also, George is still following them down to the catacombs. If you don't want to risk getting dragged into this, don't follow. Eventually, the group comes to a tiny hole in an abandoned tunnel, and George continuously tells him that he isn't going in with them. Then, suddenly, a random policeman tackles Papillon, and George is pretty much forced to go in the hole or go to jail. Geronimo! It's only after Benji asks if George really doesn't like caves that Scarlet decides to tell him that George's little brother drowned in a cave. She then goes over to George to try and distract him, but it's not enough to pull him out of his panic. Soon, Papillon returns from making sure the policemen didn't follow, and they go deeper into the catacombs. After stopping to check the map, Papillon and Scarlet decide that they still have to go deeper. Papillon discovers hot candles, and he points out that someone is down here. Soon, they find a cult of women chanting naked in a random room, and they just keep on moving. Just your average day in the catacombs. Then Scarlet discovers a devil hole. Papillon literally tells him that this is an evil tunnel. That's it. He decides that it's much safer to crawl through a tiny crack over bones than rats. I'd be so happy to have him as the tour guide. This is a real visceral French experience, not that basic tour guide experience. What makes it even worse is they can still hear the chanting. It's actually louder now. Benji winds up getting stuck and he starts to hyperventilate as he gets claustrophobic. It's only after hearing that the tunnel is collapsing that Benji manages to crawl his way out of the tiny crack. Once they come out, Scarlet seems to think that they've gone in a big circle. Once they try to figure out where to go next, Scarlet decides that this is as good a time as any to take the devil hole. I like calling it that, that's its official name. Once inside, they notice one of Papillon's tags on the wall, and he swears that he's never been down there. Then a phone rings. As they go deeper, they find a random piano there, but it's not just any random piano. It's the same kind that George and his brother used to play. He mentions that their A4 key was messed up, and he starts to play their song. When he plays the A4 key, it's broken just like his childhood piano. Then the phone rings again. Scarlet charges headfirst through the tunnels to try and find the phone. When she does, she answers it and a man's voice asks her why she won't talk to him. When the sound gets louder, she hangs up and a man calls out to them from the shadows. It is Latoupe, Papillon's friend that lived in the catacombs. He went missing after going into the devil's hole. Still loving that name. Latop tells him that he knows a way out, and they follow him further into the catacombs. They notice that the tunnel is starting to crack more and more, and they rush to follow him to another doorway. Latop assures him that the only way out is to go deeper into the tunnels. He opens up a shaft that leads deeper down, and the crew sets up their ropes to repel themselves down. As George goes down, Benji's clip snaps, and he cuts his hands deep as he falls down onto George. As they go down a tunnel next, George falls into water, and they all find it hard to hear anything. Then, a loud alarm and roar shakes the tunnel, as they start to see people in the tunnels with them. When they ask the top what that was, he tells them that it's not a what, but a who kind of question. I would not be following this guy anymore. This is not the kind of place that you want to be wondering who in. Tunnel collapse? Okay. Six million corpses? Expected. A beast that roars so loud that it shakes your very soul? Not today. When they come to a dead end, Latop gets confused, but Scarlet and George notice some symbols that go along with their original mission to find the secret chamber of the Philosopher's Stone. 
After solving the puzzle, George and Scarlet reveal a hidden passage that has been hidden for 500 years. Scarlet can't climb into the hole fast enough, but when she gets to the other side, she discovers a Templar body that is not decomposed for over 700 years. She also discovers light peeking through some rocks underwater, and she dives under to see where it's coming from. On the other side, she finds another chamber with lit torches and treasure. When she doesn't come back, the others follow suit. Yay! Great! They found it! But how do they plan to get any of this out? Actually, I'll do you one better. How do they plan to get themselves out? They're about to die with their riches. Scarlet, on the other hand, removes the Philosopher's Stone, and she realizes that the treasure is actually a trap. She doesn't stop them in time, and the roof ends up falling down on them. Everyone is at least alive, but Latop is buried. They try to assess their situation, and Papillon decides that this is a good time to start conserving the supplies and batteries they do have. Scarlet treats Susie's wound with a stone, and it completely heals her arm in the blink of an eye. They look around for a sort of backdoor out of this situation, and they find some more writing that leads them to a symbol. It's here that Scarlet explains the title. As above, so below is essentially a staple when it comes to magic. It's all about the power within yourself. Also, I've decided that I'm going to start pointing out the exact moment that characters say the title. So here is this one. For some reason, when she actually said it, I felt like the real danger was finally going to happen from here on out. Scarlet also takes this saying very literal here, and she discovers a door on the bottom of the floor. Papillon believes that this shouldn't even be here because they are on the bottom floor of the catacomb, but they go even deeper. They find more writing in the tunnel below, and George translates this to, Abandon all hope, ye who enter here. Fun fact number who knows what, that is supposed to be what's inscribed over the gates of hell, and it ties in with my favorite book of all time, The Divine Comedy. I know this isn't a book channel, but go check that out too. Our genius explorers go straight through the gates of hell, and they find themselves magically closed in another chamber that resembles the one above them. Scarlet fearlessly dives into more water to keep moving forward, and the crew realizes that they really have no other options but to follow. When they emerge from the water, they hear something in the shadows, and it's none other than Latop. When Susie gets close, he jumps to his feet, and the group notices that something is wrong with him. I mean something more than the fact that he's lived years in the catacombs. Then, out of nowhere, he slams Susie's head against the floor, and she's definitely dead. Not even the stone is bringing her back. I know this was supposed to be a harmless venture into hell, but why didn't anyone bring a weapon? Even a pocket knife? As they continue, George notices that everything is simply a mirror image of everything they've already been through, and he can't believe that they just keep going deeper and deeper. When they rappel down the well again, Benji is left up top, and he is being stalked by one of those creepy cult women. She scares him so bad that he falls all the way down the hole. I laughed here. I know that's bad, but hearing his scream get closer so quickly for him to just plop was kind of unexpected and so abrupt. And they continue. Next, George starts to hear his little brother Danny call out to him, and when they crawl over the bones, he spots his brother drowning under a floor of water. He starts to panic, but Scarlet reminds him that none of what they're seeing is real. As they continue on, they come across a car that has one of Papillon's dead friends inside, and he's burning. Papillon gets dragged inside the car, and it disappears and sucks him into the dirt. This was a really weird thing. That's literally the best way I can describe that scene. The three remaining survivors make their way through the catacombs and eventually they can hear the cult woman stalking the tunnels. They try to sneak around a hooded figure in a chair, but it rises as they almost make it away. If this movie has taught me anything, it's to never go in the catacombs. Also, if I say I'm not going into something, I'm sticking to my guns. I bet George wishes he had just gone with that cop in the beginning. George is attacked by a dead corpse in the wall, and Zed and Scarlet try to pull him away enough to try and use the stone. It doesn't work though, and with George's help, she realizes that the stone she has is part of the test to get the real one. Only by taking the fake one back will she find the real one. 
Scarlet books it through the tunnels. I mean, she stiff arms a corpse better than any wide receiver I've ever seen in a football game. She should have been drafted after watching this. Scarlet makes it all the way back, but there are even more terrors on the way there than there were leaving. On the way, she even runs into the hanging man again, and she mentions that this is actually her dad. She wastes no time though. Once she's back at the wall that she got the stone from, she puts it back and finds out that as above, so below is more than just a mantra. On her way back to George and Zed, she takes control of her reality as she gains control over the nightmares that appear in her way. When she gets back to George, she holds his neck, kisses him, and sees that this was all the power she really needed. Now they get up and run for the exit. When they come to the wellfall, Scarlet gets Zed and George to release the hold that their secrets have over them, and they jump. When they land, they open a manhole by pushing straight down on it, and they crawl out upside down. Scarlet might have wanted to be the next Lara Croft, but after that, I'd retire. It's time for a normal, quiet life, and I'll never go underground again. Keep pianos away, keep fiery cars away, and no more naked cult women, please. After finishing up her interview, the credits roll. I know a lot of people were disappointed when this movie came out, but considering how the horror genre has been going lately, this is a nice, entertaining horror movie by comparison. Give it a shot. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more like this one. Comment what you think I should watch next and I'll see you in the next video.